Hey guys. Hello. So for the last few weeks, I've been teasing you that I've been working on something in the background. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we're going to show you some construction photos here while we talk about it. Uh, I had this idea a while back. Uh, uh, Jason Toddick uh, from Toddick.com had given us a bunch of breadboards. And uh, when we were at uh, Parallax Robotics Expo, Roy Eltham also gave us another huge pile of them. So we have like just we're a wash in breadboards, uh -huh. and I was trying to think of a good project for them, and uh, this great idea popped into my head. I was thinking that wouldn't it be great if there was a synthesizer that had breadboards like just built into the face of it, kind of the idea of a modular synth, but going you know past the module stage down into the prototyping of module stage mm -hmm. so that I could build things custom from the ground up mm -hmm. and I thought that was a pretty cool idea and there's a lot of different ways to sort of approach that but most of them were very sloppy uh, and then Roy came up with this great idea of hacking the backs of the breadboards and actually soldering to the uh, the, the leads on the inside of the boards mm -hmm. so that I could hide all of the wires that connect to the keyboards and the jacks and all of that uh, inside the case and just have the circuit that I'd want to change beyond the actual surface of the breadboard. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went about getting into Google SketchUp and sort of designing a case for this thing and I went through a couple of iterations and uh, mostly it was designed around the size of the keyboard that I had laying around which is 25 keys and uh, the closest that I could get to that with some breadboard stretched across and uh, the maximum length of material that I could cut with the tools that we have here. So this, uh, this shape is sort of uh, based on all of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, the inside is about 13 and 5 eighths um, width and that was the closest I could get. It's not perfect for both of them but you know when you're working with existing materials you kind of have to use what's there yeah uh, we didn't buy anything to do this project we did it all with scrap material uh, and scavenged um, resources we used a totic.com power supply a uh, uh, an mgh uh, uh, propeller asc mm -hmm. that's arduino shield compatible propeller Right, I remember that. Um, just some shift registers we had laying around and a couple of capacitors and a bunch of wires and resistors and stuff. Gotcha. And, uh, well, let's see. Um, so basically we've got keys and I've hacked the board so that each key is completely separate from all of the others and they feed into 32 inputs mm -hmm. on this uh, daisy chain of shift registers and that gets pulled into the propeller and it's just using them to uh, control SIDCOG at the moment, which is a Commodore 64 SID chip emulator and can, I, can uh, I ask a question go ahead so if i put like a whole bunch of resistors and capacitors on this breadboard and somehow connect them to each other i can make a different kind of sound yeah right now i'm just using the propeller to sort of generate my tones for me but uh, what i'd like to be able to do is do something like have you know this going into a propeller and the propeller doing sort of a pulse width modulation uh to get a voltage out that controls like a Five 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 timer. Okay, just and that'll just generate a square wave. So does this require a microcontroller, or can it actually do it without microcontroller? Efforts? You can do it without because the behind each of these um, uh, pins, where the keys come into these shift registers, there's a wire that literally runs down to the switches inside the keys. So you don't have to use the shift registers into a microcontroller. You can actually use voltage off those lines as they come up to control stuff up here. Mm -hmm. Now, we've only got so much breadboard space, so that's only so practical. But you could definitely put together something that allowed you to have different voltages for different keys. Mm -hmm. And then those would feed something like a 555 timer or any sort of voltage controlled oscillator where the amount of voltage going into it changes the frequency that comes out of it. So the synth could either be purely analog or, in this case, analog and digital. Yeah. Okay. And uh, cool. we've got four 
sets running down the middle here. These are actually connected to the speakers, uh, the, uh, the line outputs on the back of the, the unit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I left enough room here to sort of be able to build a synth here and be able to build some filter stuff here. And we'll get to that another time. For today, I just want to sort of uh, to demonstrate uh, what it can sound like with just a prop and some some shift registers. Are we going to be able to take it apart? Yeah, it uh, it's not. These aren't glued down yet. Okay. And nor is this screwed in yet. I still need to finish the case. Okay. There's still some sharp edges, and we need to put a final coat of something on there. I mean, on this video. Are That's... we going to be able to take it apart? No, 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 no. Okay. It's too sensitive. That's why I took pictures during assembly. Ah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So that's like monophonic and what you'd expect, but I did this fancy. You can actually play up to three notes at a time because the SID chip had three voices. Now this keyboard supports full polyphony, which means you could hold on every single key and have it make notes if you had the right sort of tone generating circuit up there on the top. Okay. Runs out on four. Cool. Like so. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't written any pieces for ProtoSynth yet, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we just got this working like, I don't know, <laughs> 20 minutes ago. Yeah, it's yeah. been a lot of late nights. So yeah, that's the basic idea here, and you could do any number of things, like instead of it just being controlled by the keyboard, you could build a sequencer over here and have your sequencer being controlling uh, your uh, tones, making them come out. You could build sort of a drum machine on this mm -hmm. uh, and have... The sequencer cue off the drums while you're playing. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually has four outputs, so you could actually do multi-channel recording of um, uh, a drum machine, a bass loop thing, and a uh, synthesizer, you know, harmony and melody sort of stuff going on all at the same time, and they could have discrete outputs. Or you could use these to sort of bring signals in from the outside, run it through filter circuit or something that you built here and then run it back out to your recording system. Uh, you could do uh, sort of a combination of both, right? Mm -hmm. Where you've got your synthesizer here is actually controlling an effect. Like you build a filter circuit and what keys you're pushing changes like its filter frequency mm -hmm. or something like that. And that could be affecting a signal that comes in through the back and then goes back out to your equipment. Can you explain a little how you hooked everything up? Well, I did show construction photos of that. I mean, it's it's solder and wires. Oh. So you soldered, I mean, that's an oxygenate keyboard, right? And then that's it was soldered to the backs of this these uh breadboards, right? Yep. Okay. To the to where the shift registers are. Yep. And And then these are soldered to where the uh the jacks are. Where the jacks are. Okay, and you have how many jacks? Four jacks. Mm -hmm. And they're all the same? Quarter inch jacks. Oh. But they each have their own dedicated bus line there. I see. So then, so for instance, right now, since you only have one uh, bus line or being touched or whatever, <laughs> being addressed, uh, you only have one jack going out. Right. I see. But you don't have to. You could put everything to that one bus line. Yeah, and I could to I could be running four SID cogs in here and get it up to the point where I would have twelve notes that I could play at the same time with SID cogs, and they could just go out to all four channels, and then my mixer could deal with um, mixing them together outboard. Nice. Or you could build a mixer here and put them out to one. That's oh. that's the idea. You can you can do what you want to do. And not have to build something new to do it. You can just, you know, I mean, case-wise, keyboard-wise, you know, it's all arranged. And then you can just be creative here and not have to worry about wires everywhere. Cool. All right. Well, that's my project. Good project. We will be back building circuits on this very soon. Yep. That's it for us. Bye. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.